Hey girl, happy Valentine's Day, girl. It's that special time of year. The sexy time of year. Do you feel like sexy time, girl? I hope you do feel like sexy time. And I hope you find somebody to have it with, because it sure as hell ain't gonna be me. Our time was good, but I think it's time I moved on to someone else, someone with a better face. It's not you, it's me. I'm not attracted to you. Do you uh, have your sister's number? Don't get me wrong, I love talking to you. It's listening to you that's hard to do. Do you validate parking for the thing? You know, between you and me, it's not a... <coughs> We've all been there, you meet somebody that seems totally nice and then it turns out they're completely heartless. By the way, forgive those people if they have been heartless to you. You've probably been heartless to somebody in your life too. But heartless is just a term, a euphemism, if you will. Turns out, thanks to technology, there are actual people out there, actual living people walking around amongst us who don't have a heart to speak of. Not a heart in their chest and not a pulse in their veins. And this is a good thing. Let's just look at some sobering numbers here. 610,000 people die every year from heart disease. That's one in every four deaths. At any given time, there's up to 4,000 people waiting for a heart transplant. And 20 people die each day waiting for a heart transplant. The problem with heart transplants is, of course, somebody has to die for you to get one. And generally, people are trying to avoid that. Plus, they have to die in a way that their heart is still healthy, usually when they're young, and suddenly and tragically. And I guess, thankfully, that doesn't happen that often. So what these patients need is a bridge, some way of getting their blood pumping through their bodies until a new heart comes available. Enter the artificial heart. Now, arguably the first artificial hearts were the heart-lung machines that kept people alive during open heart surgeries. These are also called cardiopulmonary bypass machines. Now, these have their own fascinating story, but what's also interesting about these is that they're not just a heart machine. It's not just something that pumps the blood. They also have to oxygenate the blood. And this came with a whole lot of trial and error. Everything from kind of blending the blood and mixing it with the air to literally putting it inside of balloons and shaking it. The problem is all of these methods beat up the blood pretty bad. Blood turns out is actually pretty fragile and this can lead to a lot of clotting problems. Clotting problems that can lead to strokes and ironically, heart attacks. Now eventually this technology settled on sort of passing the blood through a membrane, an oxygenated membrane, so it works almost the same as the alveoli in our lungs. But this isn't like a long-term solution for somebody that's waiting for a transplant. This is the kind of thing that would be done over a few hours, you know, while somebody was getting the transplant. It was actually 1982 before the first patient actually received an artificial heart, and this was a retired dentist named Barney Clark. The heart was called the Jarvis 7, and it made the inventor Robert Jarvis a household name. It was big time news all over the country. Unfortunately, Barney only survived for about 112 days, but the technology progressed, things got better, and the second guy who received an artificial heart actually lived for 600 days. Today, the gold standard for artificial hearts is the total artificial heart by a company called Syncardia. The heart itself is really just a couple of bladders that take the place of the left and right ventricle. And inside each bladder is a fluid pocket that fills and pumps the blood up into the atriums. The inside part that actually interacts with the blood is made out of cow heart tissue, and this prevents the body from rejecting it. The wall itself is made out of polyurethane. And this fluid is pumped in through a couple of tubes that exit the body through the abdomen and attached to a backpack that the patient wears. This backpack contains the pump and the batteries necessary to keep this thing going, and the batteries last for about six hours each. And you think keeping your phone charged gives you anxiety. Now obviously this is not as good as having a real healthy heart where you don't have wires coming out of your gut, uh, but it is a good temporary solution that can kind of give people freedom while they're waiting for a real heart to come along. Now another option, which is even weirder in some ways, is called the ventricular assist device, or VAD. For people who have diminished capacity in just one of their ventricles, and this is usually the left ventricle, so it's often called the L VAD, but this has an interesting side effect in that the people who have this have no pulse. Yeah, it actually produces a continuous flow of blood through uh, past the ventricle into the aorta, so there's no, there's no pump action, it's just this constant flow, so their veins don't pulse, there's no th thumping, there's no throbbing, it's just continuous flow of blood. Kind of weird. But this is a lot simpler. It does still have cords that have to come out of your body into a backpack device, but the backpack is a lot smaller, so it gives a whole lot more freedom to the people who have that. In fact, Great Big Story did a, a really cool video about a uh, fitness model who has one of these. You, you see him like running on the treadmill at the gym and everything. The other day I skipped the gym because my knee itched. But hey, that's not fair. He's got like continuous blood flowing and oxygenating his body, and mine has this like pumping action to it. I can't compete with that. I mean, that's just cheating.
Just like Oscar Pistorius, who was the first uh, amputee to compete in the Olympic Games, like the regular Olympic Games, and he used carbon fiber legs, and some people complained that he had an unfair advantage because his legs weighed less and the carbon fiber gave him a springier step. They thought it wasn't fair. Regardless, he became a hero to amputees and disabled people all around the world. Until he killed his girlfriend. But seriously though, could we make an artificial heart that's so good that it actually gives somebody an unfair advantage in athletic competition? Could we get to the point that artificial organs are more than just a temporary replacement or a band-aid solution, but an actual improvement? We're nowhere near that at the moment. In fact, the heart is kind of one of the only organs that we've been able to create an artificial version of. And it just kind of barely gets us by. Perhaps our best bet right now is to grow clone organs using stem cells. I covered this in a previous video on cloning, but the idea of being able to just grow a new organ from your own stem cells and just replace it as you need is kind of the holy grail of medicine. But what if beyond cloning organs, we can actually use gene editing to improve on these organs? Basically turn them into biological machines that can actually improve the functions of our bodies. That would be awesome. And it kind of gives me hope that maybe someday we could do the whole living indefinitely thing. Well, let me know what you think. Do you know anybody that has an artificial heart or an LVAD machine? Do you think it's uh, a good improvement on their lives? Do you think that someday we could actually have an artificial heart that outlives a human heart? Talk about it in the comments. All right, thanks a lot for watching. T-shirts available at the store, answers at joe.com slash shirts. Website's been kind of in and out lately, but I think we got it all fixed. So you can go there, you can get uh, this or many other very cool shirts. There's actually some new stuff that just got put out there. So anyway, you can check that out, answers at joe.com slash shirts. Please like and share this video if you liked it. And if this is your first time here, maybe check out this video. Google thinks you'll like that or any of the others that might pop up on the sidebar over here. And if you like those, please do subscribe because I come back with videos just like this every Monday and every Thursday. All right, with that, you guys go out now, have an eye-opening rest of the week, and I'll see you on Monday. Love you guys. Take care.